Hello everybody and welcome to the second edition of the OTI video review show. This time we're going to look again at a forehand from a Gerardo who lives in Kenya, which is fantastic. And he has asked us to help him out with what he can work on to improve his forehand. Now, as you will see in a, in a little while here, I'm gonna show you um, how Gerardo hits the ball and point out exactly what I'm looking for. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, everyone, and Gerardo, let's take a look here at you playing. I'm going to stop and start as we go and do slow motion. Um, and I wanna see what we're seeing here. So first of all, um, Gerardo, strong man, so that should play in your advantage. However, I do see that Likely what will happen is that you will use this strength in a manner that is not going to allow you to add too much effortless power. So right here, the first thing that I wanted to point out in this posture, and I will let this run in a second again, is you can clearly see how there's some a very distinct level of over rotation going on where your shoulders are fully facing over to the left fence after you hit a ball from the center of the court. That is number one what I see. Let's take a look in real speed one more time you can see that again here how you are let's go slow even from here how the shoulders are already facing the side fence after you're done hitting the ball so that is the first thing that I notice which is probably going to uh, hurt you quote unquote what you do very well you have a compact take back everything is on the right side of the shoulder here that is a good job good unit turn um, a initially very good inside out position and a very good lag in your in your swing so you have a lot of power sources already in play which is good but you use them in a way where they're not beneficial to your game so let's take a look a little bit further here we're going to switch angles in a minute and show another video but you can clearly see the over rotation happening all right so let's look at another level here you can see that the over rotation is taking place one more time right here shortly after you're done your shoulders are now facing in that direction, although you're playing from no defensive position at all and no angled position right in the center of the court. That's not really needed at all and it's probably going to cause you to be rather inconsistent. Let's take a look at a couple, let's take a look at your grip um, here in a second. That is probably right here. Um, it's good for me to see your grip. And I, I would say that based on your knuckles that you have a grip that is unfavorable. So forehand grip changes are always difficult, but um, you, you, the, the index knuckle is on bevel four of what I can tell, but I believe that your heel pad is not on four or 4.5. It's probably on, on, on bevel five. Therefore the flat racket face back and you can see here that your knuckles are pretty much as straight as the grip is and you have scooched the bottom of your, your, your hand a little bit, okay? So I'm going to explain that in a little bit more detail here as I go into the analysis, okay? So let's take a look at a couple more swings. So over rotation w is the main technical element that we will see here from a swing perspective, but it is mainly caused by the grip not being ideal. So that is what we want to focus on. Let's get going. Okay, so as you were able to see, Gerard is a good player, has a lot of good things going for him already. Uh, most importantly, a very nice take back. He has a good lag on his forehand as well, strong man. So the important thing here to look at was, in my opinion, we need to look at the grip a little bit, which can be challenging. And given that this is a video, I understand that it will not always be super easy for you to see it all. But um, Gerardo, if you have any questions, you can always reach out. And I'll clarify, but basically when we are on court with our students and we deal with a grip situation, we always use a pen. Okay, we always use a pen to draw in on the racket and on the hand where the grip should be so that the student can always go back and find it. So I'm gonna address the grip structure on your forehand, Gerardo, in a little bit here. And the other thing that we wanted to look for is um, eliminating or at least minimizing the level of over rotation in your strokes. It looks like there's a little bit of a deceleration or not enough acceleration in the correct swing path and that forces you to come over to the over rotation phase or, or pose and that ultimately is based on your grip structure. Certain grip structures they more or less ask for over rotation because you cannot really swing inside out as much. You're going to swing around your body a lot more, a lot easier due to the fact of how you're holding the grip. So we're gonna, we're gonna address the grips 
I'm going to try to make it as clear as possible what I'm looking for, which adjustments, and then give you an exercise or two for over rotation. Once you have worked with the grip and the over rotation issue, in the future then we can address anything else that you want to look at, but I want to give you only the most important things to look for, okay? So again, we're going to look at the grip, we're going to look at the over rotation, let's get started. All right, first off is the grip. Without the correct grip, it's very difficult to do anything else right in tennis. So I want to show you close up as best as possible what I'm looking for, okay? So I'm going to come closer to the camera here and you will see that I have drawn in a line uh, on my hand and on the grip, which is indicating bevel number four, which you do have, okay? So Gerardo, you do seem to be having that based on what I see on the videos. But now is the important part, the heel pad, okay? So the heel pad is a little different story. You will have seen here, let me show you, I have done this on purpose like that. So you will see on my hand, right here, a long line, and this long line is supposed to be where your uh, uh, heel pad should meet bevel number four. This little X over here is the furthest over that you can go. Right now, when we look at your grip, you are literally over here. You are fully on that X, which is um, number five. So when I go back here, bevel number four is indicated by the X and that little one or that little line over here. That is bevel four. The long line is where your heel pad should meet the bevel. You can go as far over as this X with the grip, okay, and still be on 4.5. 4 but if you go any further, you're going to be on bevel number five, and that is the grip structure that is causing you issues right now. So it is very important. Let me do this again so you can see this on my hand alone. Right here you can see the X and that little line, which is bevel number four. So basically I took the two edges of that bevel and I drew them on my hand and then the long line in between is the center of that bevel where I would like to be as long as possible. And on the top one more time you can see I have the grip, I have the line on bevel number four and the, on my index knuckle with the X marked straight diagonally, uh, sorry, diagonally towards that so I can always check and see am I in the right grip. Okay, so once I evaluated that I then go and do it in a very controlled environment. So it's either in, against the wall or with a ball machine that spits out the ball really slowly or I do self feeds which is my personal favorite. First and foremost of course go and do some shadow swings. Find your grip bevel number four here, bevel number four here, 4.5 maximum and as I, um, I may not have uh, illustrated that enough Grip changes are difficult, especially on the forehand side, okay? So you want to make minimal adjustments at first just so that you can incrementally go towards your goal of having the correct grip. If you do too many adjustments too quickly or too big of an adjustment, it's probably not going to last. So that's why I'm saying if you're on 5 on your heel pad, go to 4.5. If you feel comfortable enough, go to 4. But do it in a controlled environment. So start with a shadow swing because that alone can already start feeling a little bit different, okay? and then. Do a, a self feed and just see how that feels. If that's any better, or if it's if it feels a little bit uncontrolled at first, that is totally normal because you're not used to that. But it should make it a lot easier to go to doing what I'm about to show you: the exercises to avoid over rotation. Again, the grip structure that you do have plays into the role of over rotation quite a bit. And you will have noticed on some of these videos, I've seen you, uh, Gerardo, hit forehands up here with your given strict, uh, grip structure much better than when they're in their strike zone or below your strike zone. And you will notice that once you make the grip change, grips changes, you will have a more consistent shot. You, you will not have as wild of a shot. You won't frame as many balls, but it will take a little bit of time because grip structures are uh, difficult to change. So go with that first and then let's go into the exercises for avoiding over rotation. Okay, since we now have the correct grip, or we, can, we know how to go back to getting the correct grip, even if we slip off of it, we now want to look at how to avoid over rotation. The best exercise, in my opinion, is what we call hold your finish. Now, we get it a lot that players think you have to come around really, really fast, which is only the case when you can control it and when you're playing at a really high level. Um, so I'm not going to say you cannot be with your, with, your, with your shoulders facing the front when you hit the ball, that does happen. But what we don't want to see is finishing all the way over. So if I'm hitting a forehand right here and I'm making contact like that, I don't want to finish over this direction. I still want to be able to swing up and out and then come around 
especially when I'm trying to make a correction. So I am a big proponent of exaggerating corrections, especially if your body and your brain is not used to certain movements. So just making incremental changes like with the grip is not the best idea in my opinion. So with the grip you do make incremental changes, with the swing you want to look for exaggerations. Okay. So when we look at correcting over rotation, so let me first show you what I'm seeing with over rotation. So over rotation means basically coming all the way over here, one more time coming all the way over here at the finish, which is not necessary and actually goes against generating consistent shots and consistent power. So what I want you to do is I want you to hold your finish and this is what it looks like. Exaggerate it first, then you're going to do a shadow swing and then you're just going to hold your finish with the goal that your shoulders are either still to the right, which would be the exaggerated position. One more time, you're going to execute your swing and you're going to try to keep your shoulders pointing more to the right side of the court. And then also what's okay, especially what is more likely for you to happen, is that when you make your swing, that you're finishing with your shoulders towards the net. But what you want to avoid is finishing with your shoulders pointing diagonally to that net post or even further to the side fence on the left side. So we call this hold your finish and you can go progressions. You do shadow swings first, okay, and you can see that my shoulders are now exaggeratedly long, staying over to the right side. And now, in case that's not possible, you see I'm rotating a little bit more and you can see that I'm now facing the front and I want to avoid the pull, okay? And then afterwards I do the, shadow, uh, do the cell feed. The, w this is an example of my shoulders staying diagonally to the right. And another, another hold to finish with my shoulders a little bit more open towards the court. Again, I'm a big fan of uh, exaggeration. So hold your finish is very, very important. The order of which you want to do this is fix your grip first then hold your finish, okay, for the over rotation. And of course, shadow swings, self feeds, use the wall, use a ball machine, do some short court hitting with a colleague, not the full court, short court so you can really feel how you're not going to over rotate as much, okay. And that is what I would suggest you do first and foremost to improve your forehand.